Shalom, Zion, scattered to the four corners of the earth. So I pray that you all are having some really great feast days, that you're enjoying your feast days. It's nothing like it. I know I've been really enjoying myself. It gets better and better every year. You know, and I've been blowing that show for. Been blowing it, saints. So I, I can't wait. You know, I don't I don't want them to go away. That's why I'd be so glad when the Most High destroys this place. We want to never have to worry about these pagan holidays. All these crazy heathens pushing their ide ideology on us. So this lesson we're going to be talking about the light at the end of the tunnel. Now I know some of you Hebrews, not all, but some of you, feel like we're being defeated. There's no hope. Seems like we're not going forward. The Most High is not coming back fast enough for you. Well, let me tell you something, Zion. Now, for those of you who feel that way, let me give you a little bit of encouragement. Now, don't be fooled by the outer appearances and by your emotions because that light at the end of the tunnel, oh, it's going to get bright. It's going to get brighter and brighter. Now, if you all can see what I see, you will see a whole different story because I know what's getting ready to happen. I see the Most High's hand working in behalf of us, His chosen, the apple of Yah's eyes. So you have nothing to worry about, brothers and sisters. What we need to do is constantly seek after the righteousness of the Most High and keep His laws. We don't need to be taking man's word for word and just run off with it you know i get a lot of emails of people of, of hebrews just complaining to me well i don't have nobody to worship with like they're the only person in the world in the whole world that don't have nobody to worship with well welcome to the scattered israelites club brothers and sisters because we're all in the same boat all right but know this if you seek out Yah with all your heart and all your might he's going to provide comfort for you he's going to provide wisdom for you we just got to hang in there open that scriptures start studying dig compare scriptures with scriptures the word of the Most High said that our land would be trodden down underfoot by the Gentiles. And that's what's happening right now as we speak. You have those Khazars over there claiming to be the Jews. Now until the Most High fulfills his prophecies and all this stuff comes to an head and he allows everything to play out for his fulfillment. And until then, we just got to wait, brothers and sisters. Now, yes, we got some tough times ahead of us, so don't get too comfortable. We got to go through some things. We got to be tried by the fire. That's the only way that we're going to be perfected. The Most High is going to have to allow us to go through some things. This is why it's so vital that we rehearse the word of the Most High. Not only speak it, but put it into action. Put it into our lives practice it you know the old saying practice what you preach that's what we got to do psalms 119 11 for i've hidden that word in my heart that i might not sin against thee we got to constantly rehearse it in our minds constantly rehearse rehearse that's the key that's how you're going to gain understanding of the scriptures now let's talk a little bit about these fake imposters that are over in jerusalem which are known as the Khazars, the Khazarians, the ones that are over there claiming to be us, claiming to be the Jews. Now, there's a book I want you to check out. Now, I've mentioned this book before, and some of you probably already have it, but it's called The 13th Tribe by Arthur Kessler. Now, this is a very good book because he lays out, and he's, he's a whistleblower, and he's dead. They killed him, but he was a whistleblower 
who blew the lid off the whole plan of the Rothschilds, trying to make these people fit prophecy. You know, the whole deal about the Rothschilds buying up the land, Jerusalem and all that, in the early 1930s. They planned all this stuff. They faked the Holocaust. They had it all planned out. And so when 1947 came around, the whole world announced that these fake Khazars returned to the land trying to fulfill a fake prophecy saying that Israel had returned. But nothing could be further from the truth. And we all know that. Now, when you look at the term Jew, we know who it's talking about. And I'm going to show you some scriptures that back that backs that up. But it was later on when Jewish was added. Now, the ish is pertaining to. Now, the word Jew itself is not bad, brothers and sisters. Now, I know some of y'all probably be like, well, don't call me no Jew. I ain't no Jew. I'm an Israelite. Well, it's the same thing. It is the same thing. Jew is just short for Judah. And I'm going to show you that. But Jewish is what's pertaining to, and we're not Jewish. We are the true Jews, the true Israelites. The bloodline of Jacob and his 12 sons, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when it comes to us being scattered in the whole identity theft, in this book, uh, Arthur Kessler goes on to describe how this was all plotted out. It was all a scheme. Well, they shut him up. They killed him and everything. So, But check out that book because it's, it's, it's going to lay out everything, the whole plot and all that stuff. And we must understand, Zion, that these are the very same people that are trodden down our land. And the Most High is going to take them out. You ain't got to worry about that. The Most High is going to do it. We're not going to do it. The Most High is going to do it. And I don't care what nobody says. We ain't got no business being over there. It shouldn't be no true Israelites over in that land. But see, people take it upon themselves because they think they know more than the Most High. Thinking that they can go over there and populate and force them into submission. No, that's not going to happen. You're not going to have these people rule the world. The world is given into the hands of the wicked. You're not going to just single-handedly take these people out. The Most High is going to do it. The Most High says that He will bring all the scattered from the four corners together in a place where He desires them to be. Not us. See, Zion, we don't have the power to gather up the scattered. The Most High is going to do it. So stop with the foolishness, Zion. Stop thinking that we should be going over in Jerusalem and and forcing these wicked devils into submission. What you think? They're gonna just look at us and be like, oh, you poor black babies, we stole your identity. Here's your land back. By the way, you can have all our stores and all our businesses and, and we're gonna just move somewhere else. We're gonna move back to Europe. Brothers and sisters, you got a better chance of being struck by a meteorite before these devils will give up and give us back our land. You think that's gonna happen? Not a chance. That's why the Most High is going to do it. And y'all better watch out because they're getting ready to get nuked. It's going to probably be Iran or Russia. But either way, it's fine with me because the Most High will be done. All right, Zion. So what I'm going to do now is let's go to the Blue Letter Bible. I'm going to show you some precepts on the word Jew so you can see for yourself. Uh, let's go to Esther 2.5. It says, Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jar, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. So Mordecai was a Benjamite. So he used the word Jew, and I'm bringing this out for a reason, because I want you to see with your own eyes that Jew are the Israelites. It's this short for Judah. Okay, and did you know that the word Jew and Jews together are mentioned over 250 times from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament? Over 250 times. Now, you all can just look through this and you can have fun with it. Just type in the word Jew, type in the word Jews. You can look at the Strong's uh, definition and it's, it's going to tell you what it is. So I'm just scrolling through some of this so you can, but you, like I said, you can always go back. 
and just type it in for yourself. And then you'll see all the words dealing with uh, Jew, and the verses and the precepts. This is what they stole from us, Zion. This is what they stole from us. They're calling themselves Jews. Well, actually Jewish. We know Jewish is pertaining to. But we know they're not the, they're not the real Jews. They're not. They're not even close. Now, let's go to the Strong's. Uh, show you what that means here. So you can do that, and it's going to tell you H2481. Uh, everything. We're going to scroll down here a little further. So I can show you what the word Jew is derived from. So you have Judah, Judea, Jewry. That's where it's derived from. So when you hear the word Jew, don't get offended because that's who we are. It's just short for Judah. Now, go ahead and turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Let's go there and read that. It says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say, there's a key word, which say they are Jews. Who are calling themselves the Jews? Those Khazars over there in Jerusalem. It says, and are not. So the Most High is telling you specifically that they are not the Jews. He's telling you this in his word. They say they are Jews, but they are not. But let's go further. But are the synagogue of Satan. You know that star, that Molex star that they use on their flag? That's satanic. That's what they use. These people know who they worship. They know that they're not the real Jews. They know that they're not the real Israelites. They know that they're not the real Hebrews of the Bible. They know this, Zion. We're the ones who don't know this. And this is why they have been so successful in putting a wool over our eyes, spending trillions, trillions of dollars in the entertainment business, religion, and politics just to keep us ignorant and hide our identity but we know that flopped that couldn't work because you cannot debunk the holy ruach hokadesh can't do it all that money wasted for what most high revealed the truth and he's constantly revealing the truth because there are a lot of people of our people who are still asleep but will wake up at their appointed time. So don't give up on your family members too easily. you just the ones who don't want to accept the truth. Just bag away, saints. Just bag away. Pray for them. And let it be. But don't keep forcing this thing on them if they don't want to hear it. Do not do not cast your pearls to swine or they will turn around and tear your ass up. And ass ain't a cuss word for those for those of you who still got that Christianity virgin ears. Oh my God, is he cursed? Oh, yeah, killed me sometimes. Let's move on. Let's go to Revelation chapter three and verse nine. It says, "Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews." Here we go again. Who is saying they are Jews? Well, we know we are Jews. It's talking about those Khazars. They are, they are saying that they are the Jews. Then it goes on to say, and are not, but do lie. What are they lying about? They lie about all kinds of stuff. They lied about the Holocaust. They lied about their identity being Jews. They lied about coming back to the land being Israel. They lied about a whole bunch of stuff. It goes on to say, behold, I will make them to come, get this, saints, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now, I hope y'all get the seriousness of this because what the Most High is saying here, that those people who've been lying over there in Jerusalem all this time, all this time, he's going to cause them to worship before our feet that he had loved us, the chosen of Yah, the apple of, of Yah's eyes. Now, let me give you a precept for this so that, so that you can see it even more clearer, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get that precept. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 19. 
It says, O Elohim, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. Well, what are we going through right now, saints? We're going through our affliction, our troubles, because of the curses, because of the sins of our forefathers. It goes on to say, the Gentiles shall come. It says, the Gentiles, with an S, plural, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our forefathers, well, you know it says fathers, but I said forefathers on purpose because their whole generational seed is going to have to come before us. It says, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Well, what did they profit off of? Well, for one, they stole our identity. For one, they faked the Holocaust. Thirdly, they put themselves in a prophecy that did not belong to them by proclaiming to be the ones who came back to Israel. Now, I can list a whole laundry list of stuff, but they lied about a lot of things. But the biggest one was stealing our identity. So when we talk about the light at the end of the tunnel, this is what I'm talking about because when it's all said and done, Zion, the Most High is going to get His glory and the Most High is going to have a lifted up people. And no matter how much they tried to hide identity, no, much, no matter how much they tried to kill us or come against us, it will not prevail. It will not. So don't get it twisted, saints. Just because it seems like the heathens are doing much better than us, which technically financially they are, just because we're a laughingstock of the whole world, don't think that we're forgotten or forsaken by the Most High Yah, because we're not. It's just that some of you cannot see at the end of the tunnel. You cannot see that little dim of light that is getting brighter and brighter. But you keep studying that word and you're going to see it more and more because we see all the signs around us that's happening. The Most High has been slowly, if you haven't noticed, the Most High has been slowly taking the curses off of us and putting it on the heathens. Just look around you, saints. It does, it does, it does not take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Well, hell, even the heathens know something's going on something's wrong in their society things are starting to turn the most high is fighting for his people and if you cannot see that then you really need to do some really serious soul searching you know and i mean when you really look at it when you see the bigger picture it's a no-brainer of what these people have been trying to do to us for thousands of years and you know, I had the opportunity to travel all over the world and you can just feel the hatred of these other nations. You know it. And the Bible has hit its mark. We shall be hated among all nations. It didn't say a select few. It said all nations. So go ahead and turn with me to Psalms chapter 83. Let's show you some more, just in case you're not really convinced. Psalms 83, and we're going to start at verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O Elohim. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O Elohim. And y'all know the Most High is getting ready to tear up some stuff. And we're already starting to see the beginning signs of that all around us with all this destruction. Let's go on to verse 2. For, lo, thine enemies. Who is our enemies? Well, it tells us who our enemies are in Deuteronomy 28. It says, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. 
They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones? We are because we're scattered. Why are we hidden? Because the world does not acknowledge, not yet, they will. The world does not acknowledge that we are the true Israelites of the Bible. And that's why we're hidden, because we're a joke to the rest of the world as of right now. But it's coming to a close. And the laugh is going to be on them. And we're going to be sitting back laughing at them. Yeah, you've been lied to. Verse 4. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Remember, we was talking about, I was showing you earlier about the Khazars and the book called The 13th Tribe, the whole plot to try to take over and sabotage our identity, taking credit for what was ours. Yeah, they're going to pay it back. They're going to pay it all back. Let's go to verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There is no other race of people that catches the hell that we catch on a daily basis. Now, no one can tell me that we do not fit these prophecies. No one can tell me that we don't fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28. You have to be blind, totally blind and living under a rock not to know that. So when you see the evidence that the Most High said in His Word it becomes it, it becomes clearer. Now you're probably wondering, well, how come we couldn't see this while we were caught up in Christianity? Well, you got to understand, saints, Christianity was simply designed to keep you blind and ignorant, because you got to understand Christianity itself is wicked. Christianity is evil. Christianity is putrid. It is the most filthiest thing on the face of the earth. But in our ignorance, the Most High winked at because at a time, we all didn't know no better. We thought that's the way it was supposed to be. Many of us grew up with a white Jesus hanging on our walls and our churches. So we tend to ignore it. We said it didn't matter. Hey, he came to save everybody, so it don't matter what color he is. Well, apparently it does matter. Because I guaranteed you. Once these heathens finally come to the realization that our Hamashiach is a pure, genuine black man, these heathens will become atheists overnight. And you know how, like, you know how these, some of these heathens like to say, well, Jesus wasn't white or he wasn't black. They like to say he was Middle Eastern. Like there were like white Middle Eastern people back in those days. What no white folks back in those days. No one no white Middle Eastern folks. Back in those days, the people who occupied the Middle East were black people. You can do the research. So, you know, Psalms 83 lays out the plot. And not only Psalms 83, but throughout the scriptures. You know, and it, when it says that, for they, sh for they have consulted together with one accord, or one consent, and that's one accord, but one consent, they are confederate against thee. They are confederate against Yah's chosen people. Now these people, I mean these heathens, they sit down in their think tanks and they plan stuff, Zion. I'm telling you, they plan, they got they pay people close to two hundred thousand dollars or more just to sit down at a round table just to plan our demise. Now I want you to think about that for a minute and how serious that is because they know the elites. Now your mainstream heathens you know, they're caught up in the mess. They, they think that everybody's in slavery. But see, your elites who run this world, they know who we are. They know the business. And they have been the main ones spending all this money, trillions of dollars, into politics, religion, and the media, trying to keep us ignorant. And then they turn around and they put 
certain coded messages in these Hollywood movies, letting us know who we are. And it's like they're, it's like a slap in the face because it's like they're teasing us. We know who you are, but guess what? You don't know who you are. But that's all right because the Most High is doing his work. He is working through his spirit. He is, awake, he is awakening his people across the four corners of the earth. So yeah, we ain't got to worry about that. The Most High is going to wake his people up. My sheep hear my voice. And those who hear the voice of Elohim are going to be the ones that wake up. That's why I keep telling y'all, quit trying to force this truth on unbelievers. And I'm talking about family members, friends that don't want to hear it. Maybe it's not their time yet. Bag away, pray for them. And if the will of the Most High, they're coming to you. Things will start happening, popping off. And unfortunately, yeah, it's going to be too late for a lot of our people. But we just have to do what we can. Tell those who are willing to listen. And go from there. And, let, and, and then step out the way and let the Most High do His work. The only thing we can do, Zion, is just plant the seed. We can't convict or convince no one. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. So when I do these lessons... I don't I, I can't take credit for nothing because when I pray before I do the lesson, I pray every time and I ask the most high to do your will. And then I'm stepping out the way because the rest is up to the most high because he knows who we need to reach. So we just we just need to constantly seek out the righteousness of the most high and keep these laws, brothers and sisters. Now, I told y'all I made a vow to the most high. I'm going to keep blowing this trumpet. Even if it kills me, I'm going to keep blowing this trumpet as long as I can. But we know it's coming to a time where this stuff's going to shut down. YouTube's going to shut down. Social media is going to shut down. All that stuff's going to shut down. And then what are you going to do? You're going to be forced to really heavily depend upon the Most High. And like I said earlier, Saints, we still got some things to go through. We still got some rough times ahead of us. So don't get too comfortable. You know what's so crazy, Zion? Is that like the days of Noah, you have a lot of our people, a lot of our family members, when you tell them this truth, they want to mock you to your face. They want to call you crazy, demon-possessed, all kind of stuff. Yeah, I didn't tell us to keep no laws. The laws, we don't got to keep the laws. You know what? And then they want to keep cooning. They want to keep cooning for their white masters. But here's what I got to say about that. Now, all you black folks... I suggest you get away from all these white folks. Not you, Stephen. You right where you belong. Uh, Cora, before you go, will you tell Miss Laura goodbye? D do what now? I said tell Miss Laura goodbye. Bye, Miss Laura. Hey, you know, the coons got to be the coons, and the heathens got to be the heathens. They both going to be destroyed. And we ain't going to have to worry about that kind of stuff anymore. You can believe that. Now, let me show you why our people are so caught up and destroyed. There's a reason for that. A lot of you are all familiar with Deuteronomy 28, so let's go there. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, and we're going to look at verses 36 and 64 and it says let's look at verse 36 and Elohim shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known now let me just iterate on this because there was no other nations or place on this planet that our father forefathers knew other than what the Most High gave them. Now, the land in Jerusalem where these fake Khazars are residing is nothing compared to what our forefathers had. The radius back then was much bigger because what our forefathers had, that not only Jerusalem did they occupy Jerusalem, but it consisted of parts of the Middle East as well as some parts of uh, Eastern Africa. So all that radius was included. So where these fake Khazars are residing now is much, much smaller than we had. So we're going to get, get our original land back when the Most High comes back. 
But just going back to this verse, you know, they didn't know any other places, you know, and they had to come to a place where they didn't know the language or nothing. Let's continue. It says, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. You know, it was talking about the Atlantic slave trade when we had to go and we were, our forefathers spread throughout the uh, transatlantic. And not only that, but Babylon, Babylonian, what did they have to worship? They ended up worshiping these Babylonian gods. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a twofold, threefold. I mean, it, it continues because our people constantly were going back into slavery. Now let's look at Deuteronomy 28 verse 64. It's about the same thing. And Elohim shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. What is the biggest symbol that people worship in their churches today? Crosses, the white Jesus, all these religions. And you know, when our forefathers came over here on the uh, transatlantic slave trade, they were spread not only to America, but South America, North America, all of the Caribbeans, all over the world. We were scattered. And that's the way the Most High intended it if, if we did not obey his laws. And that's exactly what happened. So my point is, saints, we didn't have to be in this position. Our forefathers put us in this position, but the heathens went overboard with it. You know, it wasn't supposed to be exactly like, like it should have been. But you know, that's why the Most High is going to repay. He's going to repay. The Bible says in Revelation that the blood is going to be up to the horse's bridle. And you know, when I used to, when I, when I seldom read about our forefathers constantly being in slavery, yeah, it's, it gets depressing sometimes, thanks, because it's like, man, why do y'all keep making us look bad? What, how come our forefathers constantly just, after all the miracles that the Most High showed them, they constantly went backwards? Man, we are truly a stiff-necked people. And out of all of that, the Most High still says that we are the apple of his eye. Now, that just blows my mind. Because I'm thinking, man, you know, the, the Most High, he can just obliviate us with one snap of his finger and choose a whole different nation. But he didn't do that. He chose us. And that's why we must love the Most High with all our might and all our strength and all our heart, brothers and sisters. And we don't need to be playing around with these laws trying to make excuses. Oh, you don't got to keep the laws in your captivity. You better you you better keep those words to yourself. Don't even let those words come out come off your lips. Because all you're doing is taking us back into captivity. Now, for many of you who always commenting that Man, I don't have nobody to worship with. It's lonely out here. I don't have nobody to worship with. Let me tell you the reason behind this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. And I'm going to show you from scripture why it feels like that. But you're not alone. Deuteronomy 4.27 and it says, And Elohim shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few, you get that's the key word, few in number among the heathen, whither Elohim shall lead you. So in other words, everywhere that we're scattered, brothers and sisters, we feel like the minority because it just don't seem like there's many of us around. When you go to different places in every state, you know, you notice that it's just only a few blacks. Unless you go to like a place where you have a really high concentration of black people like Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, you know, your, uh, your big major cities, but not everybody lives in the big major cities. So, you know, our people are scattered, so you're going to feel like you're the only one. And that's why some of you feel like that. But don't feel like that because that's not that's not the case. You are not alone. We are to worship the Most High in truth and in spirit. You know, and that's just part of our punishment because of the sins of our forefathers. We were left 
and had to go into captivity, and this is the result of it. It is what it is, brothers and sisters, but don't worry. Our captivity will turn. We just have to keep our eyes focused on the Most High and really study His Word. But let me show you a promise that the Most High is going to do for His people. And I really pray that you're writing these scriptures down, and not only writing them down, but going back and restudying them. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31, and we're going to read verses 35 through 36. Jeremiah 31, 35 through 36. And let's see what it says. It says, Thus saith Elohim, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. Elohim of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Elohim, get it, get this now, he says, if those ordinances depart from before me, saith Elohim, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Has the ordinances of the Most High ceased to exist? Absolutely not. That means we still remain the seed and seed, bloodline, the descendants. We are the seed of Jacob and the 12 sons, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It says, Then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So the Most High is letting us know, hey, look, I got you. I got you. It may seem like you're defeated. It may seem like everywhere you turn, there's negativity. You can't get ahead. You can't come together for some reason. But the Most High is letting us know, look, I got your back. You are still my chosen seed. All I want you to do is just seek my face and keep my laws. Do what your forefathers failed to do. Prove them wrong. And that's what we got to do. Now, let me show you another comforting promise. And, you know, we, we can go on and on and on, but don't worry, Zion. There's many more lessons to come if y'all's willing. You know, spread the scriptures around. Let's go to Isaiah 66 and verse 22. Isaiah 66 and verse 22. And it says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith Elohim, so shall your seed and your name remain. Now, that's a promise, brothers and sisters, you cannot refute. And even the last one you read. So, be encouraged. Just know and believe in the promises of the Most High. When he says that we will remain his seed, he means that. And all you got to do is just look, look, look around what's going on. And you know, the Most High is hitting these heathens right on direct contact without even affecting or hurting his chosen ones. That's just how precise the Most High is. He's going to protect his people. Remember Psalms 91. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. We're going to see destruction all around us, brothers and sisters. I mean, we're seeing it now. And it's going to increase as the years go by. It's going to increase. It's going to increase. All the disasters are going to increase. You know, let's just go back the last three years and just look how much these catastrophes increase. The fires, the floods, the tornadoes, hurricanes, you name it. Opioids, all that stuff. It's increasing. And they don't know what's, these heathens don't know what's going on. So be encouraged, Zion. Don't get discouraged. Don't let your outer appearances fool you. Because it may seem like that to you that you might be defeated, that the enemy is getting the upper hand, but it's anything but. Because see, we don't see everything that the Most High is doing. You know, there's so much stuff that they can't even put on the news, Zion. I mean, it's just it, tons of stuff that we're not gonna even know what's going on behind closed doors and how the Most High is working in our behalf. We just have to have faith and believe in his word. Now, 
his word said that his seed will remain forever. And that's a fact. So it's going to be well worth it in the end. You know, yeah, yeah, we're going through hell. It may seem like we're going through so much hell right now. But the Most High is not going to put no more than you can bear. You know, and some can bear more than others. But the Most High knows. He knows who can handle more pressure than others. So that's the, that's the good news with that. But the Most High has our back. He has our backs, brothers and sisters. All we need to do is seek out his righteousness and keep these laws. He's going to do the rest. He is going to do the rest. And that's why I truly believe the Most High is allowing this stuff to happen to let us know that we don't have the power to change these things. Only he can do it. You know, and we, we got we to gotta understand that, Zion. Just like the children of Israel did not have the power to split the Red Sea, only the Most High could do that. And see, what got Moses into trouble is when he struck that rock and he claimed Yah's power for his own. Have we not been doing this for you? That's what he said. Have we not been doing this for you? And that was a big mistake. He knew that little mistake caused them not to even enter into the promised land. It's that serious, brothers and sisters. We cannot take credit away from the Most High Yah. You can't do it. It's a very dangerous thing. So... But hey, look here, I pray that you are really edified and I really look forward to, if y'all's willing, future lessons. Uh, we got to do the two witnesses in the near future. So bear with me, brothers and sisters. I'm working that worth that on the side. So I think you're going to really, really enjoy that one. I'm really looking forward to showing you what the Holy Spirit uh, showed me from what I got from doing research and Line upon line and scripture upon scripture, here, the, here a little and there a little. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, I pray that you all have a wonderful Shabbat Shalom. And I'm going to leave you with Revelation, of course, you know it, 1412. You know, we got to read that. You know, we can't close out this lesson without quoting Revelation 1412. So here it goes. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of our Hamashiach. I love you, my Hebrew Israelite family. And I say, Shalom and stay strong.